So today I received the Mont Blanc homage to Victor Hugo, the 2020 Writer's Edition. Um, I was pretty excited for this purchase. This is by far the largest pen purchase I've ever done. Um, I don't really believe in the concept of a grail pen because I think there's always kind of a bigger fish out there and just as soon as you buy one thing you're likely to set your eyes on something else. Um, but this is probably the closest thing that I can get to a grail pen, at least for now. I ordered this from Iguana Cell in Spain. Um, I didn't really want to wait for it to come from an American dealer, uh, although I received this on the same day that John Gules posted their video. Um, that they received the fountain pen. Uh, I received this uh, it had to have a signature uh, course, and I've been working from home for the past, I don't know, five or six months, and it managed to be delivered on the day that I had to go into the office, so I wasn't here to sign for it. Uh, the box that it shipped in was pretty beaten up. Uh, I was really freaked out whenever I first saw it, um, but everything inside appears to be fine, um, at least so far that I can tell. This is the limited edition, which is the kind of black and uh, I think it's platinum version as opposed to the fancy stained glass one, um, which costs the same amount as my uh, car. This also came with the pen. I didn't know about this. I think this might be something that is included by Iguana, although I could be wrong. Um, this appears to be in Spanish which of the two languages I can read, Spanish is sadly not one. So this might sit on my coffee table uh, until someone comes who can speak Spanish. It's nice. Um, el último día de un condano, condano, en Mertz, I know Mertz is death. Um, I think anyway. Oh, it's from Mont Blanc, interesting. Looks a little bit like Bill and I. Um, I will have to look through this um, to see exactly what this is. It is certainly in Spanish. It's a shame it's not in French so that I can at least pretend that I know what it says. Um, but it does look really nice. I think this might possibly be a biography. Though this looks to be some dialogue, maybe something that Victor Hugo has written. Um, I see Notre Dame in here. So I will have a look, see what this is. Um, I almost want to say it might be the ultimate compendium or something like that, but probably not. It looks very nice. Um, the Man in the Flask, very reminiscent of a the homunculus in the flask, been watching Full Metal Alchemist, so that's interesting. Set this to the side. And then we have the ink, which is a nice sepia brown, made in Austria. Cool. I like the Mont Blanc inks a lot. I think this glass just looks very neat. You can see the brown kind of slushing around in there. Uh, we'll do a swab of that before the video ends, I think. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Not a fan of the instruction manuals that Mont Blanc puts in. Um, I have to say, I've never had to read instructions on how to put ink in, uh, except for maybe the first time I used a, a vacuum filler. Um, but this always, always gets in the way when I go to put this back in. And yet I never ever throw them away. They're always there, just like Mont Blanc would want. Then the main ordeal, the Mont Blanc Redis Edition, homage to Victor Hugo. Um, this is a medium nib. Uh, I was hoping the number would be on the outside, but it doesn't appear to be. Really like the box this comes in. You have the stained glass window from Notre Dame. You have some of the Gothic architecture on the front. This will be put right behind my webcam so that people can see and have no idea what it is. Looks like a book. 
I think this is the way the All Riders editions are. I quite like it. I think the thing that I am most excited about, if not the pen, is the paraphernalia um, that's involved with some of these service guides. I don't think I would even pretend to work on my own Mont Blanc, um, but this would be fun to look at. I like that there's instructions for a rollerball and mechanical pencil. Um, look at this. This was what I was expecting um, as to the included kind of memorabilia where it talks about Victor Hugo. Of course, uh, I did not anticipate ordering this from um, a Spanish um, outlet. This would be in Spanish, although it does look like some of this is in English. And I see some French here as well, so that's quite good. If you would like a book of pictures of the pen that you already have. Uh, I've been desperately waiting for pictures of this pen for close to six months now before it was officially announced. Um, I went and saw a production of Les Miserables in Bloomington, Indiana, which is a very highbrow. Um, and it was a very good production, except everyone spoke in American accents, which must have been uh, a creative decision. Um, certainly with precedent, the original Les Mis uh, distinctly was produced with British accents, although the American, um, I think it's a rhotic or a non-rhotic R, the pronunciation uh, changes some of the lyrics, uh, which is very strange to hear, I have to say. Um, and I wasn't a fan of that. Master in the House, in particular, was affected by that decision. But it was a good production. Now the actual pen. This kind of pillowy insert. This is the first pen that I've had that I am actually intimidated by. I washed my hands like three times before this. So I think these textures might just be a, a real trap for any kind of dust or grease. It does feel uh, quite lovely. Um, this back post um, is very heavy, um, which is not surprising, but it, it I imagine it would rest right back on the hand there. That's very smooth. I don't know what I was expecting, but it feels very nice to unscrew that. I was concerned about these metal, the metal section uh, and the um, threads here, threads or whatever. Um, I have one other pen with a metal section, uh, Visconti Van Gogh. I'm not a huge fan of metal sections, um, although this one seems to be girthy enough that it's not going to be a problem. I really like the way that this feels. It's not too big. It's not too heavy. Uh, you can certainly notice the weight of this in your hand. I'm not a fan of this sticker. I know that there are people who keep these stickers on for uh, decades because my 1980s 149 still had a sticker on and uh, this is perhaps sacrilegious but I will be probably taking that sticker right on off of that pen. I might throw in some better pictures, some more close-up pictures as my camera setup is not. It's an iPhone uh, that is jerry-rigged to a light, so it's certainly not the best. Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc. Let's see, we see the, on the nib there's the gargoyle, looks very good, 2020 Mont Blanc. I don't know if that can be easily seen, I will drop in some better pictures. I am glad it's not a two-tone nib. I did see the two-tone nib on the special edition. Uh, I think that works with the kind of red color scheme that they have. It would not work with this. This really is a very nice platinum black combination. I'm terrified of this, I gotta say. The textures feel lovely. I think they would be a trap for um, dirt 
Um, so I think this is something that I'll hang with Jim Drury at least for a while. I like being able to see the face of Jean Valjean there in the clip. I think that clip is kind of wild. Um, again, I'll put some better pictures in this. This is awful cinematography. I would not get hired to uh, do any movies with this. The phrase up here this is very hard to read actually um, because I am with horrible eyes. Chacon dans sa nuit s'en va vers sa lumière. I think that would translate to something like within each man there is light or something like that. Uh, I'll have to look more into that. It's been a while since I've done any French. But like I said, I'll pretend to know what that says. Signature of Victor Hugo right here. Useless trying to uh, show this. Really. There we go. I'll put some better pictures in. Alright, the first Mont Blanc that I bought was a Mont Blanc 149 from the 80s, I believe. Keep it in this rickshaw slip. I love the 149. It is my favorite pen. It did not write good out of the box. In fact, it had severe baby's bottom, and it was a huge letdown. Uh, I sent it to Mark Bacchus, who fixed it right up. It is my favorite pen you now. does not do reverse writing. Um, I don't even try. It's scratchy and no good at all. Um, I had read that the Writer's Editions were more of a 146 size. I am beyond pleased that these appear to be very similar in size. Although this one is certainly quite a bit heavier. I think what I will do now is uh, do a quick swab of this ink. What am I doing? And then I'll ink this up. So for ink swabs, I have a Prolidex, which is quite nicely organized. And this is a nice brown ink, so it will join the ranks of Herbon, Pelican, and the Exomentis. And the way that I do swabs, I got this case on Etsy, if you're interested. I document on here the ink. Um, which is the only use I have for a pencil. And the date that I received it. I usually do this with every ink that I get, including um, samples. And sometimes I put where I got this from, especially if it's a Jess ink or random allocation ink. And these are some that I haven't labeled yet, but you'll see on here that I have written the day that I received this that it was part of any kind of bundle. Bundle, excuse me. I bundled the pronunciation of that word. And uh, if it was in a bottle, like a sample, especially from Jess, I write a description of what that is so I can identify it later on. I used to do these with Q-tips, and I was told that that was not the proper way to do that. Um, I am paranoid because the ink paintbrush that I use has some stains on it. In particular, this is from Chinese, Mont Blanc Chinese Blue. And for that reason, even though uh, I have soaked this and all that, I'm not going to put this in the ink bottle. But I will use an ink miser. Jesus. Now they're getting spoiled. This is probably overkill. I don't think I really need to do this. But, you know, why not? We're having fun. I'm not sure why I made the decision to record this. I don't like doing this sort of thing. But I know I'd be talking to myself throughout this process anyway, in a less coherent manner. And I thought, well, maybe the people on Discord will like to see this. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'll put something down here just so I have references to what I usually do. Excellent. I messed that up because my hand slipped and it won't be too big of a deal though. It's much lighter than I thought it would be, at least on this swab. That is a lot lighter than I was expecting. Um, I'll have to set it down next to the other browns. Start a more orangey feel than Herbon Boudite, and certainly less kind of ready orange than the Pelican Brilliant Brown. I do like it. Mont Blanc used to make a dip pen ink, which was used by Victor Hugo. Uh, Victor Hugo predated fountain pens traditionally. Um, and the ink that he used in a dip pen was put, that recipe was put into production as a dip pen ink called Victor Hugo ink, I believe. I've not been able to find any of that. Um, even if I did, you couldn't really put it in a fountain pen, I don't think, unless you really um, thinned it out somehow. I wouldn't want to mess with that. This is what I do afterwards to use up some of the ink. Um, this is a Rhodia white pad. I just am interested in kind of what this ink looks like. Um, I gotta say, Rhodia doesn't really show shading terribly well on this, or sheen, rather. Um, I don't expect any sheen out of this ink. It doesn't strike me as that type. Um, I think it is probably going to be a pretty no frills brown. Uh, I do really like it though. It is quite light. I'll put some better pictures of this here, right where I'm holding this up. It's quite light. I love this. That's a nice gradient here. Uh, it does, I have to say, I, I think all brown inks kind of run the risk of looking either light chocolate syrup or hot chocolate, some kind of chocolate product, and or uh, just shit, um, literally uh, feces. Uh, I think the lighter side of this goes away, but this looks quite healthy, if you know what I mean. Um, brownies are a, a, a color that I like quite a bit because they match my incredible lack of personality. But I do think this will look really good in the pen. And so let's see what I can do here. I have to say this process fills me with some level of anxiety. I used to, when I would ink mountain pens, I would take the cart the, uh, excuse me, the converter out. Um, and it's still my, my gut. Wow, that is terribly smooth. That feels fantastic. I have to say, that feels splendid. Um, yeah. But every time I go to put a, um, a pen in a bottle of ink, I am terrified that I will drop the pen and that it will flattered down to the bottom and just bend the nib over the hill. And with a pen as backlighted as this, that's a real problem. I like the Hiroshizuku bottles because they have that kind of indentation. Um, we'll say I'm just now realizing there is no ink window on this. I, I certainly knew that. But uh, I think an ink window is always something that adds value to a pen. Wow, look at that beauty. No, you can't see that, can you?
Isn't that lovely? What an awful cinematographer I am. There we go. See? Pretty. I was watching the only other unboxing video that there is of this pen and the person was balancing it on their finger and, and as I was watching it I thought I might actually die of uh, congestive heart failure rapid onset uh, how do I rent label these I always find it very difficult to write Mont Blanc in cursive because the T to B transition frequently slips me up. Okay, so usually what I do is I do a swab up here, I do a couple of layers over here, um, name of the brand, name of the ink, and the pen that this is written with. I think that looks fantastic. I will do a better picture of that as well. There you go. And uh, I think also some writing. See, it happened again. I made my T into a B. Very bad practice. Mrs. Jennings would be furious. Oof, boy. It's been a very busy day, and uh, I'm not. ready to be handwriting apparently. I do think that ink looks fantastic. It writes very well. You know what I'm realizing? I have a fan on and I meant to turn that off so that you wouldn't have to listen to the sound of a fan going. But uh, clearly I didn't hear enough to do that. This is not a pen that is going to have any flex at all. It is very firm, uh, which is my preference. I have come to realize that I am not a huge fan of the flex and gold. What happened here? Hmm, interesting. I have gotten ink all over somewhere but in any event I think this writes really quite well I got my first Mont Blanc 149 my only Mont Blanc 149 rather and it didn't write uh, because it had such severe baby's bottom and I sent it to Mark Bacchus who fixed it up as I said earlier Once again, cannot write TBL. I do really love the way that Mont Blanc makes a nib, especially whenever they make one that actually writes. This is a little less firm, but nothing that I would ever even pretend to try and flex. Very, very pleased with this. Um, this is almost certainly my favorite pen yet. As far as looks go, it has something I've really never seen before. With this kind of raised design, I have some anxiety that one day these might flake off or something. Uh, but hopefully that's not the case. I can't get over how nice that is to open up. doesn't appear to be uh, too wet or too dry. 
and any time that you have a brown ink, brown inks in my experience tend to be pretty dry. And this one isn't overly wet by any means, especially not in this medium nib. Always good. I think there's always a fear that suddenly a pen will stop writing and you'll have to send it to someone and spend even more money on fixing a thing that should work right out of the box. That doesn't appear to be the case with this. I will write more with this tonight um, and see. So, references to Victor Hugo we have um, John Mazan's face, we have some architecture from the uh, Notre Dame du Paris, the cathedral, uh, Victor Hugo's signature. I believe these designs down here are from his home in exile. And my memory is pretty shaky on this, but I believe he was exiled to an island off the coast of France, or possibly even in the Caribbean, although I think that might have been Napoleon, actually. I can't remember. I believe this post is modeled after the stake that Esmeralda was uh, roped to or something. I, to be honest, I haven't read uh, Notre Dame de Petit. I've only seen the Disney adaptation, which uh, I've been a long time since I've seen that. Very pretty, very heavy. Um, very, very heavy on the back. Um, if you drop this pen, it is going to go down here. Might be a good thing. I have dropped several pens and the nib is always what torpedoes down. That might be a protective factor. Maybe Mont Blanc has made a bug a feature with this um, anti-nib destruction weight attached to the end of this pen. I am very pleased with this, I have to say. I will write some more with this. It will take some better pictures. I will not edit this video other than to put pictures in because I don't care. Um, 3707 out of 9800. Not real sure you can call an addition of almost 10,000 units uh, limited. Yeah, my fears of, of not being able to buy this quick enough probably a little bit of FOMO as opposed to actual reason. Yeah, this clip is wild. I have, n I have no pen with a clip like this. Um, this is really something else. And I gotta say it's tight on there as well. This pen is not coming out of a shirt. Really nice snap. All right, I think that's all I have to say on this. You know what? I would be quite scared of this snapping down onto that. Of course, maybe that's just paranoia. How pleasant. Fantastic. All right, that's it.